Hey guys, so what I'm going to talk about today is the limitation of using Tailwind with CDN and how to overcome that. So if you use uh, Tailwind with CDN, you lose a lot of flexibility, like you can't really customize Tailwind's default theme. Imagine you wanted to customize uh, how the typography goes on, how the, what, font, what fonts you want to use, let's say, um, Oh, what, are, what are some of the theme colors that you want to use? You can't really do all of these things and you can't really again use, and this is major, you can't really use at apply. So, th so the reason for, you, for, for using at apply would be something like this. So imagine like you have all of these things, like these classes applied on the header tag. Now, this makes the HTML look slightly <coughs> uh, crowded. Now, if I wanted to do something like header and I just wanted to apply all of these classes to the header tag, I would be able to do something like this if Tailwind wasn't included with CDN and built in the project. But I can't really do that since Tailwind is being used as a CSS file uh, right now uh, or directly through the CDN. So what I really need to do to achieve or to include <coughs> Tailwind in my project is for starters, I'm just going to run npm init. NPM init is, is going to create an empty package.json file. You can just keep pressing enter. It's asking some basic information about the package.json file. So we now know that the package.json file has been created. After that, what we need to do is we need to basically install all of these different packages. And I'm just going to copy paste these and install them. Obviously, I'm going to I'm going to provide um, you a list of all of these commands. So you can just easily copy paste them and run them on your end. Um, so once that's done, I also need to run npm install gulp. So you also need to install gulp and I'm just going to do that separately as well. <coughs> so we're, we're going to use gulp instead of the basic SAS module to compile uh, our SCSS into CSS. I'm just going to go ahead and delete my CSS folder to begin with. And once I've done that, I'm also going to create a new file that's going to be named gulpfile.js. <coughs> this gulp file is going to basically uh, use a lot of things, for example, and I can obviously I trade them here. It's going to use post CSS. It's going to use Tailwind. It's going to use SAS. It's going to use CSS Nano. It's going to use a bunch of these things. And <coughs> what it's going to do is it's going to actually, and let me just remove this. So what it's going to do is it's actually going to uh, process our SCSS file using all of these processors, and then it's going to generate our CSS file. So let's just do a gulp watch. And once I do that, it should automatically be watching our SCSS file. Any changes I make here, I'm going to save them. And then that's the CSS file is automatically generated. And then you can see it's, it's compiled in a really minified uh, fashion. So that's all great. And for example, if I was to apply, let's say a border radius, I, I can say border radius 50 pixels. If I do that, you can see, okay, that's finished. And the border radius has been applied here. So that's all, that's all fine and dandy. Now what we want to do next is we want to include our tailwind here as well. So how do we do that? Well, basically we just use the at import statements that are defined uh, here. Um, well, these aren't really at import statements, but you can definitely use these as well. <coughs> so you're going to go at the top of your file and you're going to just include these, uh, the, the tailwind there. You're going to save it. It's starting the file. It hasn't finished it yet. As you can see, I still see only the, only the basic CSS. I don't really see, um, some of my some of the tailwind but now since it has compiled it it's finished it i can see all of the tailwind css being generated in my css file so what i can do now is i can easily just remove this tailwind cdn i can save and then i can go to my own page and as you can see everything still works and now if i want i can just cut this header css from here all the classes here and let's just make sure that it's working let's just open our server again Yes, as you can see, the header classes have been removed. If I add them back, they're there. But let's say I remove them, and then I can now go to my styles file. I can create a header tag, and then I can say add apply, and I can just go ahead and apply all of the CSS directly in my style in, in my styles.scss file. And once it saves, it's going to automatically update the CSS file, and I'm going to have the code visible here. 
So it takes some time at times to actually build the build the files, but it should hopefully be done soon. And now it's done, as and you can see, it's respecting some of the things that I have. So what I would suggest is when you're actually trying to figure out what styles to apply, do whatever. What you can do is you can actually go ahead and apply all of the classes directly to your HTML. You can figure out what classes you want, what Tailwind classes you want, and then cut them and then paste them directly in your SCSS file if you want. This is a this is a necessity, but it's just a really easy way to keep your HTML simplified, not really have a lot of those things. And then obviously it's very easy to manage as well. You can directly go into your SCSS file. You can apply some uh, some specific CSS, for example, if I wanted to apply a border radius of five pixels, I don't think five pixels or let's say nine pixels is available in uh, Tailwind. So now I can easily just do that, combining some of the Tailwind styles that I have in my SCSS file. Otherwise, imagine you had to write your some of the classes in HTML and then you had to make updates in the SCSS file. So obviously that would be a slight disconnect. But yeah, this should pretty much work for you guys. It should be pretty straightforward. And if there are any issues that uh, you encounter while doing all of these things, then definitely do hit me up in the comments and I'll uh, try my best to reply. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Also apologies. One really awesome thing that I forgot to add was as a result of, of again, including Tailwind directly in your project um, and then um, like once you have that done, like what you need to do is basically you need to generate your uh, configuration file for Tailwind. So you can do that by using npx Tailwind CSS in it. It's going to generate this config file. You can obviously configure some of the some of the themes. You can extend them. You can uh, choose variants. You can do a lot of these things. You can also have like Tailwind plugins here. But one really awesome thing that happens now that you have Tailwind included in your project and you also have a Tailwind config.js file installed. What happens is now if I press like B, as you can see, I'm getting all of the Tailwind classes of that, that are available on Tailwind for my for my easy use. I don't have to remember all of the classes. I don't have to remember like what BG Green 500 looks like. I have that in front of me. I don't have to remember what MT minus 10 means. I don't have to remember all of the flex classes, all of the justify classes. I get this autocomplete uh, once I have Tailwind included in my project and then I also have the Tailwind file generated and there's also one more thing you need to have the extension Tailwind CSS IntelliSense installed and once you have all of these three things you're going to get this really awesome autocomplete that's going to really make your life way 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 easier sometimes even I myself forget some of the classes Tailwind has tons of them so I don't expect you to remember every single class I just need you to have an idea of what the class name could be. For example, I wanna make my text large. I wanna say text minus LG. It's gonna tell me exactly what the font size for my text is going to be. And that just makes your life so, so, so much easier. So yeah, that's one major improvement over what we had previously that I wanted to highlight. And these are all the reasons why I would really suggest you to get the Gulp file running, get your get some of the packages that you have in the package.json file. I'm gonna obviously have all of the things for you written. I'm also going to upload this project just in case you wanna take, uh, take this as a starter. And yeah, if you have any questions or you get stuck anywhere, then definitely feel free to let me know.